So, hi, this is Benjamin Ray with another episode of Sustainability Live. I'm here with Doug McGee. Thank you for coming on. Good morning. You're welcome, Ben. Thanks for having me. Doug is an amazing personal coach. He and I have worked together for uh, over the past three or four years, and we actually go back about 30 years. So we've got quite a history. And today, Doug is going to talk about how to sustain personal power in a time of contraction and change, which we felt was really applicable to what's going on in the world right now. But first, Doug, I'd like you to explain kind of your background and how you got to be where you are now and how you can help people. Oh my, well, it's it's over 30 years, Ben, because we knew each other in, in grades or in elementary or That's junior right. high school. So uh, uh, 30 years would, would be, um, probably add another 10 to that. So <laughs> right. um, grand junior high Huskies, right? Uh, was it Huskies? Yeah. I think uh, <laughs> take you back into some time. So, yeah, actually, actually elementary, right? Sixth grade. Yeah, holy smokes. So yeah, um, before that. We're we're wiser than than the 30 years that you originally said. That's and, right. Uh, You've got the gray hairs to prove the wiseness, right? And that actually that kind of leads into your question, ironically, is I, I do remember in um, ninth grade taking a charge on the basketball court in a, in a basketball game and falling back. Remember how I used to take charges, right? Mm -hmm. And I broke my avicular bone in my right hand. And when I broke that bone, um, I had to get a cast, right? And so I learned how to do everything left-handed. Hmm. And including, uh, I worked at, do you remember Northwoods Inn down on Santa Fe? <laughs> yeah. So I was the I was the bus boy at Northwoods Inn on Santa Fe, which is now Hudson Gardens. And I remember my mom driving me to work, and 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 um, I promise there's a point to this. And I hadn't thought about this in a long time. And she said, "Well, how are you going to bust tables with a broken hand because you carry your tray?" Yeah. And I I I said in that moment, I said, "Mom, it's all mind over matter." And literally didn't even know what I meant when I said that. But that that statement lives in me today and it's lived in me from that point forward all through my um, my sports um, you know and recreational athleticism and uh, my businesses that I've opened and in the mortgage business that I was successful in and certainly it's it's so much um, uh, re so relevant in today's society and in and, and what I do for my um, for my work today, which is, I would I would say I'm a personal leadership uh, coach, mm. and so mind over matter really has has like uh, so much relevance and importance um, for all of us. And I remember that moment in time back at Grand Junior High when I first that kind of first integrated in, inside inside of me, right in my mm. thinking. And so when you're when you're <clears throat> using that today with what's going on in the world and what has been going on. It is a huge area of change and contraction. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the courage that you're experiencing or that you'd like to, you know, talk to people about, about what it takes to learn and grow throughout this period of change? Well, we, we are either going to grow and learn or we're going to resist it and suffer. And um, so many of us, um, don't like change, but change is inevitable. It's the only constant on the planet. Mm -hmm. Everything changes. There's no moment that's the same as the next moment. Never, 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 never. We're not the same. Even on a cellular level, our bodies are consistently changing. Our circulation is changing. The, 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 everything inside of this system, this human system is always evolving and changing. And so including the virus or viruses. And so if we are resisting that change that is inevitable, then we are experiencing um, a lot of upset, pain, suffering, um, things that we don't want to experience, but we're actually creating it. Hmm. We're creating so it by resisting so, it. By, so that is part of that mind over matter is that it's something that we are creating, just the perception of what's going on, not really what's going on. 
Yeah, and because because if my experience of this this current pandemic is different than your experience of the pandemic, and I'm thriving in it, and and let's say you're not, you're resisting it in it, then we're both having two separate experiences. Not that one's right or wrong, but if if two people can have two separate experiences, then why couldn't you have the experience that you want. I mean, there's not like an absolute experience that's going to that's going to occur now. And I understand people are suffering. I understand people are losing family members and 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 the whole world. And even with that, we get to choose the experience that we are going to have based on the circumstances that are presented in our lives. And if we're resisting that experience, it's gonna it's gonna have a lot more contraction and density than the freeness and liberation of actually just taking the wave and riding with it. And it won't last as long either. Well, can you explain really how to maintain that, that kind of personal power? How do you maintain that commitment to, to that, you know, to accepting that there is a hardship yet maintaining that personal power? Well, there's momentum, right? So momentum is either going to be, to the left or to the right. And let's say the momentum to the left, and I don't know if this is a reverse camera here or not, but momentum to the left, right, is going to be negative momentum. It's negative feedback loops. And that that could be sustainable. True? Yes. Or you could have momentum to the right, which would be positive feedback loops. And if our habits and behaviors are producing negative feedback loops that are creating uh, upset, suffering, um, dissonance, then we have to look at our behaviors and habits so that if that's not the experience that we want, we can integrate new behaviors and habits that will produce positive feedback loops, right? And those positive feedback loops now become the new momentum, the new era of experiencing what you choose and what you want. So it it comes down to what are you doing to produce positive or negative feedback loops? If, 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 if mainstream media is pushing information into your, into your consciousness, into your mind, that's having you feel fearful and, and contracting, maybe that's not the great resource, right? Mm. If, if, con- if, contem- if uh, contemplative prayer or meditation or breath work is opening you up to having you experience life in, a, in, a, in an expansive or an elevated or liberated way, then maybe that's a behavior that you could um, take on versus mainstream media. So that's just one example, right? And so, so you have to understand really what those habits are, positive and negative, and then commit to changing those in some way. That may be the tricky part is, well, first understanding what they are, but then how do you go about changing uh, with the commitment to, cha- to positive change? Well, so you try things out and you learn from other models that are working. Um, uh, so, you know, for example, um, healthy nutrition, right? So I think at one point I heard that the pandemic, the the, the consumption of alcohol was at, at some high level or something. I don't know the statistics, but it's not that I don't have a beer every now and then or a glass of wine, but I don't make that a habit in my life because I know that the impact of that, um, you know, clouds my thinking, clouds my consciousness, mm-hmm. you know, heavy, heavy, unhealthy foods, packaged foods, right? So nutrition is huge. Um, being in nature uh, and connecting with the outdoors when, when we're all inside and, um, you know, on our computers and Zooms, like get outside and walk. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many different behaviors that we can do, prayer and meditation, um, positive connection with other people. These, these behaviors and habits that we can supplement or integrate into our life that that allow us to sustain a different experience that is expansive and opening versus the negative experience, which is contraction and fear. So, and there's no right way. It's the way that works for Doug or the way that works for Ben. And that's the exploration, right? Like for me, I haven't run much in the last five years, I, I, I ride my bike a lot, but I went out and ran like a couple times in the last couple of weeks and just to be outside and run, it was, it was really fun. It hurt, I haven't run much, but it was a good experience, right? 
Right, right. Well, you know, you've talked, you talk a lot about courage, you know, kind of as a second component in this whole personal power in this time. Can you speak more just about courage and really what you mean by that? It's the courage to act and, and go against the main the mainstream. I think. I mean, I I I, I believe that um, it requires us as humans to check into our heart and know what is um, what we align with individually, and then have the courage to step forward in that and know that everything will work out. Um, hmm. You know, so 25 years as a mortgage banker, Ben, and, and, and you know a little bit of my story, and I've always wanted to do this work, and there was never a perfect time. I would, I, I would find excuses about every year and what I, I, I would delay my, my coaching business and try to do both at the same time. But eventually it just had, it, it, it required me to have the courage to leave one uh, season of my life and step into another one and, and, and have the faith that that would um, uh, work out. And it, and it, and it has. Mm. Uh, it's different than I ever would have thought. Um, and it's better than I ever would have thought. So. It seems like uh, before pandemic, a lot of people had fear around either starting a new business or going out on their own or doing a complete, completely different line of work, saying like it's not safe. I'm I'm afraid to do that. But now, or at least over the past nine months, a lot of people have been forced into doing something different. You know, there's a lot of innovation in terms of startups and new secretary of state applications. And, you know, there's a lot of ideas coming out of this. And do you see that continuing, that people will have, be more courageous now, that there's more of an example that people can be successful? Or do you think after this goes back to, you know, what it will be or goes to what it will be, people will settle back into the habits of safety? Yeah, well, I don't want to create what I think. I want to create what I believe would serve the greater good. So I could fall into a thinking that people are going to go back to safety, but that really wouldn't serve humanity. So mm -hmm. I choose to believe that there's hope that a, a, a significant number of people will see that this is actually an awakening for us and that they'll, they'll make uh, the consistent choices of courage to follow something that's deeper in their heart to serve humanity at a different level and talk about sustainability, that's what will sustain, will, will help sustain the human race, mm. right? Because the, 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 the negative feedback loop that we were on before this, you know, some experts said 20 years down the road, road we're gonna, you know, we're gonna run out of a, a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. And now we have an opportunity if people just knew that they are special and unique in their own way. Like really, really get that, that each of us are so unique and special and that we're here for a reason. And this is an honor to be in the human experience right now and to take that uniqueness that I am and contribute to the world for a better place. And if we all did that, that's exciting. Mm, mm -hmm. So it isn't just about the courage to change yourself. It's really to find the courage within yourself, then to do something about it, take action to yeah. affect community or to, you know, really, really affect humanity. So that community aspect, I know, is a huge issue or a huge part of your program. Can you explain some of that, how once you do take action, then what are some elements of community when you, when you say that? Yeah, so having what I call destiny partners to support mm -hmm. and align with your mission because I can tell you there's been um, a dozen times when I, I get exposed you know, in, in, in my business and I feel like I want to run back to the safe area and just like well, no one really cares, I'm not making a difference, I'll just go back and and do mortgages, right, and be safe. But then I have this backstop of of, of destiny partners called community that um, hold a space for me for when that time occurs to lift me up and get me back into the field, right? 
because we want to run back to the sidelines and, and mm-hmm. we also want to run back to the bleachers and, and not only the bleachers, like the, the nosebleed bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. I mean, if you, it, it, and, and so the, the community is, is like, okay, I know you're going through a little meltdown here, little Dougie, but Let, let's, let's just support you and get you back onto the field and take the next right step that will, you know, bring that energy back. And I have it, you know, 90% of the time. And the other 10%, I think is just part of the human experience. And, and I actually am grateful for that 10% that I don't have it. And I want to hide because it gives me that much more motivation and inspiration to, to show up um, more powerfully than I would had I not had that experience. And community is a huge part of that. So the community, are you talking about a specific uh, small accountability group? Are you talking about larger groups of uh, let, let's say a uh, community within a, a religious organization, a uh, tight group, big group, family, friends. How, how do you find those, those people to help with you and your destiny partners? Yeah. Yes. To all of those. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and many people aren't um, willing to be vulnerable and open enough to go join a community. So in the work that I do with the men that, 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 that I work with through realm, um, we have created a community. We've created an opportunity where they have permission to be in a community. Mm-hmm. And there, there's, there's technology and ground rules that, and standards to be in that community, which are all taught and learned, and they show up at a very high level and support each other and inspire each other and challenge each other. So any community like that would, would serve any of us. It just happens to be that we have that built into my business because I recognize how incredibly foundational that is. And that can be created anywhere. It can be created with your partner. It can be created in your, in your um, co-workers. It can be created in, 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 in church, right? It could be created with your neighbors. Um, you just have to have the courage to either create it yourself or join someone that's already set the, the, the framework for that. So what are those elements that keep you in track? Is it daily accountability? Is it them just calling BS on you when you're out? You know, what are those things that keep you in mind? Well, the things that keep me in mind, Ben, are that I know I'm here to deliver a gift to the world. And I, if I don't, then I've missed an opportunity. So what keeps me, what keeps me in line is, is my purpose, my mission, my, there's a word that I use that's called IntelliKey. An IntelliKey meaning that it's, 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 it's like your soul's journey. And I know deep in my heart that the work I'm doing is the most important work of my life. And it's the best work I've ever done. And it's an honor to, to have, done this with myself for the last 20 years and now to lead and guide others, specifically men. Um, so what keeps me in line is my soul, my soul's journey, my soul's purpose, my work. And I have family members who know that that's important to me and my wife, and I've given them permission to knock me over the head when I start being a little whiny, whiny little kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how did you find your soul's purpose? Oh, I, I got beat up. I made a lot of mistakes. I um, had some transgressions in, in my life. I failed. Um, I succeeded. I had a I had a real desire to do work that would serve someone greater than myself and my family. Mm. Um, I searched. I did the work. I mean, I uncovered shit from my childhood and um powerful stuff not not like therapy stuff it's like what a gift that i was raised as a youngest child in a family of four with a single mom and didn't have a father and all these stories that at some point needed to be healed hmm. and now that they're healed they're like holy moly what if that was that the best way that i could have experienced my life so that i can do the work that i can do right now because the mission behind my work is that you know, without having a father, that heal, that wound, that, that wound that I've healed now has me showing up for men that have children so that that generational pattern that exists 
in most masculine roles is broken. Hmm. And, hmm. And, and, and so how did I find my purpose? I had the, the courage and the tenacity and the willingness to screw up and fail. And I think it just is revealed. It wasn't even found. It was within me. That's the irony. It's always within us. It's like an mm -hmm. unveiling and a revealing. The, you know, you talk a lot about stories and, you know, a lot of us grow up with things that happen to us and you talk a lot about, you know, well, that's just a story, you know, can you explain that, you know, what that means? Because that was a, a big breakthrough for me working with you was to kind of get over those stories. And it's a very important piece, I think, of finding your purpose or getting on to what you were meant to do. So I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, when you can tell a story that that um, that was an experience that, that you had in your life and, and you can share it from a neutral space, um, then, then the story can just be neutral. There's no energy on it. When we share a story and there's energy that is um, impacting us, then the story has an impact. So it's not necessarily the story, it's the energy that you experience when you are in the story. And so you, for me, I really had to be able to explore the um, inner dialogue that I was having that was creating energy in my life that was impacting me in the ways that I didn't want to be impacted, right? Um, and so the beginning is the inquiry into the stories that I was telling myself, the energy around the story, which was really what was um, the, the significant impact. The story is just a, it's just a series of words at a neutral space, right? Mm -hmm. So I was um, raised by a single mom. That's just a neutral story. But before I experienced the healing of all that, it, it used to hit me right here in my chest as a bad thing, as an embarrassment. Didn't have money, you know? And all that energy around that was holding me back from really fully expressing and liberating myself and my ultimate fullest power to deliver my uniqueness to the world. So that was a was that a physical feeling inside you when you thought of that time, you could feel that energy yeah. inside you. Yeah, and, and that's that's the coolest thing about the, you know the work that I do is I I I help men actually feel because we've been taught not to feel. Yeah. You and I had that conversation. It's right. a, it's a safety mechanism. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm great. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Well, how is that working? Right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so not it, very well, right? <laughs> it's a whole new tool to be able to to actually experience the energy from a story so that we can transcend beyond it. Mm -hmm. And guys are taught not to feel. They're, you know, they're they're don't be sad, don't be, don't be mad, right? I can remember hearing that as a child. Mm -hmm. And but mm -hmm. that's that's you know, feeling is the secret. Right. Feeling is truly the secret. Mm-hmm. Can you talk a bit about the program, about your realm program? Because it, it's really important for anyone listening to this or after how impactful that is, especially when men are in the situation that you were just talking about now where you're taught not to feel and really how that's transformative. As I experienced, but I'd like you to talk to the audience about it. It's powerful stuff. Yeah, so it's a direct experience of my life. And, um, you know, I isolated myself. I, I was alone, even though I had what the quintessential life would most people would want, right? And I felt, lone, I felt alone and isolated. And I felt I could do it all by myself. And I didn't, and what I was experiencing, no one else could relate to. And that's just a bunch of bull. Because every man that is in any of our uh, initiatives and our and our in our brotherhood can relate to every single thing that one man shares, um, and so it's the relatability and the permission to um, undress and be honest and naked in a in a community where you don't have to hide anymore, and that you're not alone, and the freedom of that is. Um, 
it's un, it's 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 incredible because we don't we men don't ever give themselves many men don't ever allow themselves that opportunity so it's it almost feels like you're getting into this warm hot tub where you can just relax <laughs> and know that the the other men around you have the same um, challenges in life if you're a business owner the, the the pressures of payroll the pressures of human resource I mean I get it all but the the the, the further you quote unquote, climb up the ladder, the lonelier and the more isolated we become. Mm -hmm. So it's essential to be in a community of like-minded, like-hearted men who have the similar challenges and can relate to each other and then not buy into the stories and, and lift them and hold them up in a way that supports their purpose so that they can touch other people in their lives. And it, it can't be done by yourself. It just, it just is not, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone out there can can call me and tell me how to do it, but I I don't know if it can be done by yourself. So the first step is just like taking a breath, allowing yourself to be really honest and saying I can't do this all. I want help, and I'm going to give myself permission to to get that. So when you do have let, let's just say there are ten men together um, talking, what what is that part that would get them from talking kind of machismo, like I'm, I'm good, everything's fine. What gets them over that barrier to, to, be, to be able to be vulnerable and let down their guard enough in that, in that area of trust? Um, one simple tool, it's called the, the seven layers. And the seven layers is, is, a, is, a, is a question of whys. And ultimately, what we get to at the bottom of the seventh layer is the, is, is honesty. So when 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 men don't even know that they're not being honest. For example, how are you today? I'm fine. That's a cover up, right? Mm -hmm. Why are you fine? Um, because I get a vacation in a week. Why is having a vacation in a week um, having you feel fine? Right. So ultimately, you go through this series of questions that gets down to just just the honest facts. And when we get to our, our I don't want to say truth because that's 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 a hard one to, to you know, label, but it's the facts. Right. Mm -hmm. It's where we are and who we are. And when we can get there, it's foundational. It's grounded. It's integrated. And. From that space, we can build whatever we want. So how, the, 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 the reason to do that in a group of 10 people, like you suggested, is when everyone is living in their facts, right? They're living in, in, in honesty. Then they connect at their truth, their mm -hmm. honest level. They're at their, 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 they connect at their authentic level. And when everyone is authentic, and there's no mask and there's no pretense and there's no bullshit and there's no trying to compete, then we can build from there. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Mm -hmm. it makes sense. I don't even know if that answered your question. Uh, no, it, it makes a lot of sense. I think the one of the biggest keys is just having the courage to be vulnerable with other men whom you know or don't know intimately, you know, not like forever, just as authentic selves. I think that's a really tough thing for men to do but once they do the whole world opens up it's liberating you know and it's interesting um vulnerability is is um can be construed as weakness hmm. right that's that's a, that's a that's a that's a story but it's a belief that 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 we many men have been taught and 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 human humans have been taught vulnerability is weakness for men the number one shame trigger is being perceived as weak. Mm. So if there's a hard wire between vulnerability and weakness, and weakness means shame, who would ever want to be vulnerable? Because it's going to bring shame upon us. Mm. And, sh and, and shame is, is the worst possible thing that men can experience. <laughs> like you're ashamed. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to be ashamed of anything? Yeah. So yeah, we it's it's powerful work, I'm telling you. But you got to dig deep. You've got to dig deep, right? Oh, I mean, it, a lot of us, most men, 
uh, you know, um, are in that position unless they have done some sort of work to understand that there is a there is a, a path to not feeling that way, to feeling shame because we were all brought up like that. I mean, our generation right. Right. most surely was brought up like that. And and what I find, and you know, I get to speak to, I'd say fifty to hundred men a month, is they just all want permission. Mm. So in the beginning of my conversation, I just say, look, I'm going to, I'm going to speak to you like we've known each other for 20 years and we have the permission to truly be honest with each other because mm. when we create that framework and that foundation, then what we can co-create together is super powerful. Mm. We stay at a, at a, at a pretense and a cover up and a mask. It's not even worth the conversation. It's a waste of time. Right. It's just not. Yeah. Because anything that's created from that is is less than honest. And our <laughs> not a mimic, right? We could go on forever, Ben, but uh, yeah. well the um you know going into this next year, um what do you recommend? It's is it change, is it contraction? How should how should people view this? coming year. I know it's just a date. January 1st is a date like any other, but there seems to be, oh, when we get through 2020, oh, it'll be different. But will it be different? And how can it be different? Well, so my recommendation is to explore whatever is a honest, transparent path for you. Because anything that I recommend is just advice. And I don't like to give advice because people know, people know in their heart. So mm -hmm. um, connect with your heart and uh, be in a community that challenges you to do that. And know that, you know, um, the framework that this too shall pass is really not a powerful framework. People, I'm hearing that all the time. And it's like we're waiting for something in the future to, to, for us to experience, to be happy, joyful, connected. Like this too shall pass. When, when, when this passes, things will be back to normal. It's that BS. It's not. So, so the framework is this need not pass is a totally different, like you can just live and thrive in this moment regardless of what's occurring. And I understand it's challenging. I've had some challenges this year too, but this need not pass. This is happening as, as, as it's perfectly designed to happen. Hmm. And why not just thrive in it? Not even resilient, like thrive in this. So, so thrive in the opportunity. You see it as an opportunity to learn, to grow, to do inner work, to be what we're meant to be. Yeah, I bet there's a good percentage, maybe six out of 10 people out there that, that don't love what they do. And they know that there's something else waiting to be revealed. And they have all these reasons and excuses on why it's not the right time. But when I had that, I still had those same reasons and excuses eight years later. So I'm just sharing with you, like there, nothing's going to change. This is this is the optimal time to show up, connect with who you are as a human being, and deliver that into the world for the greater good of humanity. Why not? Why and not? Why, can you get make off the, it come down from the nosebleeds and get on the field? <laughs> get in the field. And look, you can monetize it. It's okay. You can make money out of this, whatever it is that your specialty is. You don't, it, you know, so advice, be yourself and deliver it to the world and have a lot of, uh, I wish I could cuss, but I won't, um, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun doing it. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Well, that's uh that's great recommendation advice. I mean, it's all motivational to me. So thank you for coming on to the show. No, I appreciate, appreciate that. So how can someone get a hold of you? What's the best way if they'd like to talk to you more? So, well, the, the obvious is um, email, and, and but I'm gonna offer my phone number for any man who wants to talk to me. 
and it's a direct line to me. It's 303-668-3720. Um, Let me say I, that again, 303-668-3720. Yeah. Okay. And, and um, so that that is an invitation to one or two or three or ten guys who are sitting there right now watching this going, holy smokes, he just touched something inside of me. And it gives you an, 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 it gives them an opportunity and the permission to reach out. OK, um, so that's a, That's an invitation and an offering. And then outside of that, if they want to learn more about the work that I'm doing with men or my personal leadership work, it's Doug at Realm, R-E-A-L-M dot men. So it is dot men. It's not dot com. It's Doug at Realm dot men. And that's just a, you know, a, a lighter way of connecting with me. But for those who really want to take some action, give me a call. I'd love to have a conversation. That's great. Well, thank you again. And have an amazing day on the playing field. And you do great work and keep it up. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Let's go get muddy. Have some fun. And um, I'm glad this came together today for us. So I appreciate right. it. Sounds good. All right. Talk to you soon. Okay. Peace.